Meet Susan. Susan is a 23-year-old computer science student at the university. Today she has a semantics lecture which she is really excited about. Susan likes to get to the bottom of things, to reach understanding. She often reflects on possibilities, implications, applications, and consequences of what she's learning. Susan is characterized by a preference for deep learning. She spontaneously uses higher cognitive processes. Faced with a curriculum, she basically teaches herself. In fact, we almost cannot prevent her from learning. But she is not our concern today. Robert, on the other hand, is. Now, where is Robert? Ah, there he is. Robert is also a homo sapiens. Same age, also a student of computer science, and also has the semantics lecture today. However, Robert is a different type of student. His goal is not to achieve understanding. In fact, Robert doesn't really care about the learning in itself. His goal at university is different. His goal is to get a piece of paper and a handshake from an important man with gray hair, to pass exams, get a degree, and get a decent job. Robert is characterized by a preference for surface learning. He will only use higher cognitive processes if he really, really, really has to. He will cut any corner in achieving his goal with minimum effort. So I'm sure that you can all see that the familiar structure of a finite automaton can easily be interpreted as a labeled transition system where the configuration simply will be the states of the automaton. Let's have a look inside the auditorium to see how Susan and Robert are doing. Arrow, the transition relation will Let's be look a little closer. Of the automaton. Hmm, this is so, interesting. A bi-simulation between two concurrent systems is a relation on the states, satisfying that for any two related states, if one system can perform an A action... Now let's have a look at Robert. ...in such a way that the two systems end up... <sighs> what is the break? ...belonging to the bi-simulation. And we say that two systems are bi-similar if and only if there exists a bi-simulation between the two systems. i just give you one example. If you think of a programming... Here you might think that Robert is the only one to blame that he's the only one responsible for his mediocre gain from the teaching. But Robert just has a different goal than Susan. He's merely responding to a system. The statistics also carry an important message and suggest a different course of action. Twenty or thirty years ago, there were mostly Susans at the universities. Nowadays, however, as student intake has increased dramatically, the Roberts now outnumber the Susans. This makes for a considerable problem which is important to tackle for any responsible modern society. But before we deal with it, Roberts' learning that is, we need to take a look at the situation from a different perspective. Let's see what the teachers have to say about our two students. Yes? Excuse me. Could you tell me about Susan, please? Uh, Susan. Yes, Susan is one of our good students. She always does well, not, not only in my own classes, but I know that she performs well in all classes. She's truly one of our good students. Then what about Robert? Robert. Robert. You know, the guy... Ah, Robert. Well, he's one of our bad students. Notice how this labeling conveniently defers responsibility. In particular, we cannot do anything about it. 
It's just the way students are. Either good or bad. This good student, bad student perspective is also known as the blame the students approach to teaching and is level one in John Big's three levels of thinking about teaching. A level one teacher is concerned with what students are. For him, the exam is a matter of sorting the good students from the bad. A level two teacher has the focus on the teacher and is concerned with what the teacher does. From this perspective, there are good teachers. I made an animation yesterday, and uh, you'll see the information in blue coming in here. Bad teachers. For the proof of lemma 37b, assuming that proposition 21g holds. This perspective is also known as the blame the teacher's perspective. A so-called good level 2 teacher will attempt to arm himself with an armada of teaching techniques, tips, and tricks. There are many types of level 2 teachers. However, common for most of these, apart from having a teacher focus, is that the result is passive students. We need to engage and activate the student. And then she said, it was the transition system. <laughs> Great teacher. Man, that guy was good. Yeah, but I didn't really get the point about the indexes, and I wasn't too sure about the rest either, but uh, yeah, great teacher. As clearly demonstrated by our entertainer teacher, activation itself is not enough. A teacher at the most advanced level, level three, is particularly concerned with what a student does before, during, and after teaching. That is, he is particularly concerned with the product or the learning outcome of the teaching. But before we can go there, we need to understand understanding. Since we were talking about activation, I'd like to activate you, the viewer, using the following puzzle. Please consider the following numeric transcription system, where one is written like this, two like this, and so forth. I'll give you ten seconds. Now I'd like you to write down, say, the last five digits of my office phone number. One, eight, seven, two, five. In this numeric system. We, Homo sapiens, are quite bad at memorizing random information. Psychologists claim that we are only able to hold seven plus minus two pieces of random information in our short-term memory. Now, suppose I showed you the following grid. As you can see in this number system, one is at the top left corner, and hence written like this, whereas, for example, eight is at the bottom, and hence written like this. Now you can probably write anything using this silly number system for the next 65 years. <laughs>